And we're back with another episode of the Finisher Booster Podcast. Hang out in the garage with my best easy, friend easy. Chad Higgins. I get excited. Oh, coming Sometimes in I get excited. Well, I mean, I get excited because we had a nice lunch. I'm ready to go. It was Rare. fantastic. Yeah, it was good. It was very good. My name is Chad Higgins, and I am excited to be here. <laughs> my name is Zach Worker. I'm excited to be did here. Did you introduce yourself, or did I uh, just, like, <laughs> jump in <laughs> this jump most... <laughs> I th- I'll be honest. You brought so much energy at the beginning. It was too much. It was too uh, much. Because normally you're like, hey, what's up? What are yeah. you yeah. I'm Zach Worker. Hey. And so, anyways, hey, you threw me hey, off hey, my hey, game. Let's go over here. We'll slow it down. We'll no, 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 no. Him. We're past that point. We're moving hey, on. Hey, welcome to another episode of the Youth Ministry Booster Podcast. My name is Zach Worker. And hang in the garage with my best friend Chad Higgins. See, then we did it. We got it. We're there. We're ready. Take two every time. If this is their first time watching this, <laughs> it's too much. It's, it's too much. Well, that's fine. Welcome, <laughs> welcome. Glad you're here. Uh, this episode is actually a part three. Uh, we're on the third part. Trinity. Of, the the third tri- one's never good. Oh no, no, the return of the. The organization, yeah. Uh, Revenge of the organization, return of the organization. Uh, this is, if you haven't watched the first two, we'll link them below. But this is at least the third part, maybe a fourth part. We'll see how far we get into our notes today. Uh, for what youth ministers and youth ministries need to get organized. Um, but before we do that, I want to hear the story that you shared with me uh, about your daughter. We love our kiddos. We talk about them. Malia is your daughter for yeah. first-time listeners. Um, y'all are back to school, and you're back in a regular rhythm of going to church. Yeah. Uh, after summer in and out, vacay camps, whatever. And Malia had the most delightful story to share. Yeah. So our our church is doing this thing where um, they like they haven't restarted their like children's church stuff yet. We've got a bunch of like college students that come, and so like. They're starting to get back into school. A labor school. force, yeah. If you the will. labor force, yeah, yeah. Um, and so before they kick that off, like the kids are coming in the main service with their parents, and so they have these cool little kids boxes that like kids are able for to... for Sunday morning worship. Yeah, it's really it's, good. It's, it keeps them entertained because instead of going off to kids' church, it's right. like you'd bring the kids' church. Yeah, to they go to their in little the pizza box Sunday yeah. school, and then they come in with us. Yeah. So um, well played, kids ministry. Well yeah, played. Yeah. Um. So Malia is between Martha and I. Yeah. She's like knees on the ground, facing the chair, playing with this little okay. box, and uh, pastor speaking. Yeah. And he makes the phrase, um, here we see Jesus, okay. talking about like, like... In the text. Yeah, like, like, like here in we the see text, Jesus doing this. Right? The, the, the Christological lens of the text. Correct. Yeah, got it. Yeah. Um, now, what this man doesn't know is that my daughter, for the last probably half a year, has had this reoccurring question over and over again of, why can I not see God? Where's he at? Okay. Let's call him. Yeah. We talk a lot about God. Why can't I see God? We keep calling. Where's he at? So Malia, in the middle of playing, I don't even think she's listening, right? Yeah. But she hears the phrase, here Here we we see see Jesus. Jesus. My girl jumps up. Whips that head around. Not just head. She full turns and loud. She goes, what? And then she turns to me and Martha and she goes, Jesus is here? He's here? (laughs) Where? Mm. And and a little bit like, why have we been having to listen to this guy? Right. If Jesus has been here the whole time, like, I want to see him. Right. So she's like, I want to see him. Like, where's yeah. he at? All Let's get the opening stuff. act out of here. Yeah. Let's yeah. get to the main event. The yeah. he's, done. He's getting gone. Um, and, and so <laughs> we, I'll be honest, I just immediately start laughing. Okay. Um, Which is exactly what every pastor wants to hear during their sermon, during a non-joke, is a belly laugh, right? Like, yeah. And here we see Jesus. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! Um, <laughs> But everybody around us starts kind of like giggling yeah, as well. Because right? they heard her. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. she's excited. She's like, where's Jesus? Let's see him. Um, and so anyway. Call him. Yeah, yeah. Right in the middle Amazing. of the sermon, I'm having to like. He's here. Explain to her all oh, of these yeah. kind of things. Christ in the text. Yes. So. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Well, I mean, again, that's. Uh, we, we are. We're in that phase. Third grade, first grader. So some of the things that are like. You know, where the stories that we shared, they're starting to ask if we can take them literally, right? Like, not like, can we take it literally? But yeah. like, you know, if the thing's happening in the text and we talk about how important it is, 
Yeah. Let, let's do that. Let's do that. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's um, it's an interesting time. Your, your voice has said some fun things. Oh, too, my gosh. Right? So um, my third grader is growing up all the time. My first grader, this is his first year of public school. He was yeah. at the little, like, private kindergarten. Um, he's become really concerned with what he's going to wear and styling um, his hair. Malia's been into fashion. Okay, well. so so our ours is more our outfit. So we're we're a little bit we're the fit, right? So uh, he loves his soccer jerseys. He loves some t-shirts are cooler than others. So the other day he got on a Karen because she matched like a black t-shirt and red shorts. And he didn't say it this way, but basically like that didn't go with his shoes. Yeah. He's like that he's like that's not that's not what I want with these shoes basically. Like he wanted to wear dark colors so he could have his green shoes really pop. And she was like I'm so sorry and I was like you got to think about that. Yeah. You got to think about it. Uh, but the one that got us that like fully sent me the other night was he was getting ready. We were brushing teeth. So not brush teeth, floss teeth. Um, we do the bluey tactical we right like we're going to go to the bathroom we're going to we're going to go potty before we go to bed. Uh, and he's like I want I want the comb. And I was like oh okay. And he starts combing his hair, which we typically just do in the morning to get ready for school. He's combing, he's looking at himself. And he's got beautiful, like, blonde, blonde hair like I used to have. Not anymore. And he goes, man, I have handsome hair. <laughs> <laughs> and you're not ready for your, your six-year-old yeah. to just, like, throw himself a bone, you know? Ah, yeah. oh, man, I got handsome hair. And so it is... Uh, you know, we are in a new chapter. We're in a new oh, era right. for sure. Uh, but that's, uh, we'll talk more with it later. We want to bring you all to speed, though. Uh, organization, we talked a lot in the last two episodes about organization, I think kind of at a ministry level. Yeah. The turn we wanted to make today is for you, the minister. So in your own life, things that we would share wisdom from our own lives, how do you get yourself organized? Some of that is getting the ministry organized, the, the calendar, the planning, the events, the scope, the sequence. But in the days, I think we spent a lot of time talking about the years and the months. This episode in particular, we're going to talk about the days, the days of the week. Like these are the days of our lives. And so I think we want to talk about the grind of ministry and how you don't get ground out or how you at least have a battle plan. So you feel like at the end of each day, you can feel good about the day. Because that's the thing I want to start with is that most folks that feel the overwhelming snowball of stuff that leads to some version of disorganization is the battle is often won and lost in a day in a day's time right like like you you never really lose it all you never really win it all but if you can get a few good days in a row you can feel like you're turning the tide yeah. so i want to start there so chad higgins give us some daily wisdom you were going to actually i think pitch it like as a question, you want to ask? Oh, about, I'm going to ask that at the very about, end. At the very end of me, okay, okay. Very end. That's okay. how we're going to close. Okay, so but we'll save that twist for the end. So um, stick around for Chad's final the question. The first thing I want to say is this: that I think in this conversation, like most things we talk about, there is the um, hypothetical. Okay. And then there's the dream day the, versus the yes. actual day. Yeah. And and so I want to start there. Okay. I think a lot of people that fail when it comes to organization. They read books or they read blog articles yeah. that are written from those, you know, we, we've all met them. There are those people that have to have like all their pencils lined up right, in like right, the right, right direction. Right. These idealized days. Yeah. And yeah. there are some people that, let's just be honest, those are mental health disorders right, that are. Right. That's a different <laughs> podcast for <laughs> yeah. a different day. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. It's too much. And we recommend help. But if you're if you're unorganized, you look and you're like, oh, I should be doing that. That's what organization is. Right. Yeah, yeah. And I think sometimes we try to take tips and, and tricks from people that are just like naturally inclined that way. Mm, okay. And I don't know that that always works for everybody. So the first thing that I would say even with everything that we're going to talk about in this episode, above all, find the things that work for you yeah. that push you towards the direction that you want to go. Don't just do the things that are natural or easy. Right. Those of what got, has gotten you to this place of feeling That's right. organized. That's right. So it is going to be a stretch for you, 
but finding things that actually work is going to be really important. Well, I mean, I think one of the first pitfalls for anybody looking to get organized is thinking that the tool was going to do the work. Yeah. Like just because you have, like, there are so many apps you can download right. that are great apps, but if you never use it right. or you use it once, it's not going to get it done. Like to the point that like some of my favorite people in this space of organization management are like, pencil, paper, post-it. Like whatever you will actually use is the best tool. Whatever you'll learn to use is the best tool. So the, the advocacy here is like, man, if you just got this device or just this app or this thing, it would change your life. Whatever works for you. Personal organization is very frankly that. It is very personal. So you can be techy, you can be analog. Whatever works is what works. So, mm. so do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so the the first advice that I would give is this. Um, the thing that's helped me with organization is actually a spatial thing. Okay. So if I... I get the room ready? Well, create space for organization. Okay. Um, I think a lot of times when we start to have messy areas... Yeah or even lack in organization and things like receipts, Yeah, it often comes down to the lack of a space. Yeah. So it's really hard to keep a room organized if the goal is just when we pick it up, we just want it to look nice. Because mm. then there's never a place to put things back. Things have to go to a place. Right. They have to land somewhere. That, yeah, and, yeah. and so... Sometimes you can set yourself up in the beginning to stay organized long term. Okay. So instead of just having the like catch all closet, yeah, right, to actually inventory the things that we have, yeah, that they go in a specific place. Okay. So it's like even if that closet is the summer storage closet, right. that's fine. That's where summer camp storage stuff goes. Well, but I would even, I would. I would push even more. Okay. For me, like I want to know like, okay, I don't know. Like igloo coolers all go on these racks. Stacked up nice. Right? Yeah. 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 Sports equipment all goes in this big tub. container. Yeah. And so like, it doesn't have to be like all my Frisbees are lined up. Yeah. If you want to go there, do that. Yeah. But I think labeling it allows it to like have a space that also allows when somebody else puts it up. Could find it. Because yeah, that's could, one of the it. things we talked about, I think, in the first episode, is good organization allows for leadership to happen, for you to begin to delegate. And so now it's, hey, will you help us pick up after camp? Yeah. You're not having, you want to be there, right, and yeah. help with the process if you can. But you're not the one going, oh, let's put this here. Mm. That you become the bottleneck because... Only you know where things go. It's labeled, yeah. it, it, and we're able to see this is exactly where these kind of things That's go, good. are put away. Um, and so anytime you buy something new yeah. or you bring something into the process, right, start to think through where does this go? Where is it stored, housed, all that kind of stuff. That's good. And, and that's, that's going to help a lot. Well, I think that even carries over into your own, like, let's make the space smaller. Yep. So your own office. You don't have to have an intricate file for receipts, but there should be at least a place that they go. Yep. Uh, if you have an app that you're scanning and taking pictures and then you're keeping hard copies for 12 months, at least there's a desk drawer or an accordion file or something they go in or at the bare minimum, a big envelope yeah. that I put all of this month in until the end of the month, and then we're going to, you know, yeah. run them through. Like, there's just got to be some place for it to land so it's not just filling up your wallet or laying all over your desk to end up becoming scratch paper yep. or whatever. Boxes with lids are your friend. Yes. Labeled boxes with lids. Big fan of labeled boxes with lids. Because even, even let's say let's say you have a real simple structure, okay? Every receipt that I'm going to get, it doesn't even have to look nice, is going to go in this shoebox. Yeah. Okay? That sits on your desk. Without a doubt, a shoebox without a lid is just... Messy. It's messy. messy. You put a lid on that guy? Organized. Somehow. Yeah. Right? Like, everybody that walks in your room now... Binders with cover sheet inserts... Boxes with lids. Exactly. <laughs> like there are little things like that yeah. that you can do to like 
help the help just the image yeah. of what's happening there. Well, but also your own brain space, right? Mm-hmm. There's something about crossing off a to-do list and putting a lid on a box, yeah. The other thing that I would say with this in, when it comes to space is it's having spaces for things, um, but know when it's ready to be thrown away. Okay. Have the term limit. Maybe even write on the box, yeah. like destroy December 31st or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so and, and know your process, right? Like if those receipts, once they're turned in, yeah. They need to be filed for, you know what I mean, taxes year or, or whatever. whatever. Yeah, yeah. Then those can go off of your desk yep. because they've already been submitted. Yeah. And then they can go deep Live, into whatever. a file yeah. somewhere that is tucked away because you're not you're not dealing with that anymore. Right. And I think sometimes we're still we still have things on our workspace that were work yeah. that are no longer work right. and we need to move those out. The commentary from last month sermon series Correct. put it that put that bad boy back on the bookshelf right he done you know right. like or the notes you have or the scrap paper you're doing i think this is actually one of the easiest ways to begin to turn the tide is to take 10 minutes when, whenever you're about to be done take 10 extra minutes clean your workspace off mm-hmm. so that tomorrow morning when you show up it's in a posture of ready and not a posture of busy oh that's good uh, like I mean today like like having this room ready for us to record before you even got here we were ready like there wasn't like well hold on let me get the light out of the box and the whatever like it doesn't always live like this like this is like 50 percent of what it usually is but yesterday before I finished I got this set up so when you came in today we're ready to go I appreciate that you're welcome you're welcome Leah. um yeah, so I, I think having space is a big one. I think that that's an area that's achievable f- for everyone. Yeah. Um, it's going to be different for everyone, but I think creating places for those to happen. And that's going to help you not just with your desk or your room, but even think through like, okay, when it comes to the check-in process of students coming yeah, on Wednesday. Yeah, those new cards, yeah. Having space for the things. Yeah is going to allow you to be able to plug leaders into yep. it, uh, explain it much easier. And so like do all of the elements that are used week to week have a space, yeah. both to be kept and stored, but yeah. then also like the using process, right? Yeah. Like um, I, I don't know how many times, you know, you, you, you're trying to set up check-in and you're trying to find pins. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like. Those should be little things where it's like... There's we, a drawer full of pins. We know yeah. where those kind of things There's are There's a big at. cup full of pins. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. How'd y'all go through 300 pins? We had we had 50 here and 250 in the back of yeah, yeah, Right. Yeah. And when they're strewn everywhere, yeah. like you're just constantly grabbing those kind of things. And, and so I think minimizing those, allowing for space is going to be a, a good, good thing to help you. So organizing the space you have. Mm-hmm. I think batching some of the task is something else that we can do. So uh, offline or in real life, one of the ways on a Sunday or midweek, uh, one of my dear friends from North Carolina in ministry has a clipboard that like collapse open close. So you can have a list of important things on top and then you can open it up if you collect anything. So whether it's maybe monies for an event, a form, a new student, a prayer card, there's something you're carrying around with you that's dedicated to that work. And then either that night or the next day, it's all ready for you to open and you can sort and distribute what you need to, but everything's all together in one place, ready to be organized instead of you having like two checks in your backpack and then a note card in your Bible and another thing folded up in your wallet. Like like everything goes here and then that goes from our youth gathering time to my office and then from there it gets distributed and organized. Same for our desktop. So I know that's one of the areas you wanted to talk about. Uh, our computer, in a lot of ways, is a virtual office. Your desktop, your your Chrome tabs, your Safari tabs, like these are things that a lot of our brain space can be occupied just moving between all the stuff or looking for or finding yep. things. Um, there's probably some weekly time doing some digital house keeping, cleaning, um, putting some lids on digital boxes by putting old files backed up in a cloud drive and not cluttering your desktop, yeah. uh, putting them on an external hard drive. I can't think about all the times that I did my worst because I had things in places that I could not find them to the point that I almost rewrote some resources or things that I already had. I just didn't know no, that right. it was because it was strewn about and not in the folder that I thought. Yeah, I 
this is a this is an actual class that I wish was taught. Was taught. This is seminary level stuff. Yeah. Um, specifically when it comes to organization of a laptop, like I don't I don't think it's taught enough how to utilize mail. Mm. Um, our email is one of the apps that we probably use the most. Yeah. And I with no structure. With no structure. It's just like no ev- tags, no flags, no folders. Everything is just in the inbox. It's a pretty strong metaphor for how a lot of us feel about our Correct. work. Correct. And yeah. then it's just like, I know that so and so sent me something. Yeah. So then you're doing like random searches yeah. for like camp. Chat Chad camp file re- reimbursement. Yep. Can't find it. Um it never this, happened apparently. In the same way that you're gonna create hopefully yeah create some folders on your desktop and i'll kind of explain to you kind of how i try to set yeah. my stuff up we'll talk through the mail first um is i try to create folders on this on the side that are events or projects okay and so anytime a new project gets started like so that d now or that conference yeah like, whoever it's from it's in that folder and i i want to label it as such so like you know, D now 2020 yeah. um, is going to be a folder. That was a rough year, but it's a pretty empty folder. In yeah, well, dude, <laughs> it's a pretty rough. We, uh, of all the D nows, that one had the either the fewest or the most emails, everybody depending was, on whether you had a February or a March yeah. D now. <laughs> uh, I forgot about that. That was a rough year. <laughs> um, and so uh, everything in, that comes in about that, or I send out yeah. about that, you just it drag it there. over there. Yeah. It lives there. The other piece of, there are sometimes that things just are back and forth that don't really fall anywhere, yeah. or kind of just general archive, 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 archive. Yes, those long threads. Yeah. The only things that should be in your major inbox are like, Action items. Action items yeah. right now. Yeah. These are things that we're, you're currently working on. Please reply to blank. And your your uh, inbox, in a way, is a to-do list. For, for some folks, so I have a friend that literally, that's he emails himself tasks to do. Uh, there is no app. There is no note paper. He lives and breathes out of email. And so if it's get the proposal to Chad by Friday, he writes an email yep. that says the details and maybe a link, and then he gets it done by cleaning out his inbox. Yep. And that's how he does his work. The other thing, it's a way to do it. The other thing that I would really recommend yeah. is you never, ever, ever put that email on anything not work-related. Okay. That is not your Hulu login. Yes, yes. That is not your JC Penney's <laughs> credit card. You know what I mean? Fifteen percent off at IHOP for my birthday. Yes, you're welcome. And the minute that email address gets out there, yeah, the fir- first email that you see, you've got to go to the bottom of that page Un- and unsubscribe. Yeah, every 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 time. Because the last thing that you want is your email to begin to be filled with stuff like that. Fettered, dirty, so go, muddied. Dude, go out, make some generic yeah. Google email that's yeah. free. Yeah. Use pastor admin at gmail.com. And then that can just be the thing that you sign up for everything yeah. with. Um, that you just know. You, I like Domino's coupons. Yeah. All right. Cool, well, dude. Twenty two at the hotmail dot com. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, please, please make all of your generic emails through hotmail dot com. Yeah. yeah it's the you've best. got, you've got yeah. to clean up that space and tr- and protect it as much as you can. Yes. Um, because you'll start to get a bunch of emails and, man, j- you you will Burn inevitably you open something, forget about it, and it just lives there. And so. Trying to keep that as as uh, much as you can, just clean to where the things in your inbox are yep. the things that have to get done, and then archive everything else. Just it's one more click. It's, it's not gone. Just one more click, just real quick. Well, so that's the that's the one that I want to get into for today. I think that's the bulk of our conversation. Is a lot of the things that we're talking about stem from a posture towards some of our work that maybe is a word that we like using or not like using, but we procrastinate. Yeah, the extra click. The 10 minutes before you're done, the labeling of the stuff you got, like it's all a little extra. I mean, everything that we've talked about today is a little extra. And for some folks, they stop at the first thing instead of the extra thing. So Chad Higgins, how do we help? What causes that? What might someone who said, no, Chad, that's so many extra clicks. Like, how do you encourage them in a way that like 
it is worth it that's uh, compelling even in the ways in which we're like, I just don't even know anymore. Yeah. Procrastination is not about a thing of being lazy. It's a, it's an emotion. Okay. It's a feeling you feel, so, not an ethic you have. There's actually some st- recent studies that's been going around about procrastination. Um, that's it's everything is tied to this like feeling that the work brings to you. Okay, it's how you feel about your work. Yes, and so a lot of times, not the difficulty of the work. Correct. It's why sometimes the easiest tasks okay. are really hard to get oh, done. Oh, hold on, now you're meddling. Now yeah, you're meddling. Because, yeah, because because for us, like you don't want to do it. You don't want to do it, but honestly, it don't make a difference. Exactly, but it makes you feel a certain way, mm. and a lot of times it. It'll bring up these like, oh, I, don't, I just don't like doing it. Or I know once I get into it, it's going to be miserable. It's the receipts, right? It's the just the sometimes it's the mundane work yeah, that we yeah. want to put off because there's Is anybody there, going to care. There yeah. are those exciting things, oh, right? Yeah, it's so, so much more fun to like film and edit the video than it is to finish our expense reports by the 31st. Right. Um, and so a lot of times those things will get procrastinated. And I think a lot of times when we talk about organization, those are the things that we feel like we failed at a lot of times in yeah. life. Um, and so then we want to push it back and it's like, oh, no big deal. I'm moving on to these other things. And I think that a lot of what we're talking about is it. I think we need to address it where it's true and realize, hey, like I've got some mental, emotional things I'm actually working through in this. Yeah. And I think sometimes we over, um, we overload ourselves with things. Okay. And we feel like we've got to either get everything done or nothing done. Oh, well, and because we couldn't get everything done, we inevitably decided to not get anything Anything done. done. Yep. And that is, I think the challenge of trying to win it in the day. Um, what can you reasonably get done? Yeah. I think for a lot of folks, we talked about this in the pre-show, they they don't always have, because the day wasn't idealized, it wasn't the day they thought they were going to have, or the thing took longer, or they were unsure how it was going to take, um, they end up not getting what they wanted done, so they don't get anything done. And so, man, what is, what is the wisdom there of like trying to like accurately map out like what how, how do we estimate our time better so that we actually can get the three things done we wanted to get done and not got the one thing that didn't quite get done so now we got nothing done yep so here's the thing that i would really recommend it's the thing that's worked for me um i will first say this you don't know how long everything's going to take okay you just don't you can estimate it yeah some things take less time. Some things take more time. So therefore, I think you've got to be way in front of stuff. Okay. I, uh, the thing that helped, one of the things that helped me the most that I got to in student ministry is I never wanted to be working on anything that was happening that week, that week. Okay. If I'm writing a talk it's for future weeks. It's for future not weeks. Not this week at any point. Yes. Okay. Like any of those kind of things. Like I don't want to be finishing something, even Monday, that we're doing Friday. Yeah. Because, and here's why. If I don't start it until then, and it does take longer than I thought, or just You're life pinched. happens. You're pinched, yeah. Right? Like the the tragedy happens in this kid's life, yet we've got D now on Friday. Yeah. And I've waited till Thursday to mess it up, you know, yeah. to do something. There's just no time left. There's no time left. Yeah. Right? And so I obviously there's little things that have to happen the week of. You gotta run to the grocery store yeah. or whatever for that game that requires something to be cold. Yeah. But those are low stress like task items. Yeah. Okay, but I shouldn't be planning or working out anything that week. I should be working on next week because here's the deal. If I don't get to it, I'm okay. Yeah. The thing that allows me to to help in that area is remember, for me, I'm going to admit to myself, procrastination is this mental thing. So if I can keep my stress low, my anxiety low, and these kind of things, and chugging along a little by little, then then we're going to get there in the end. Yeah. And so 
I, I don't want to be working frantically. Yes. So one of the things that I try to do uh, every week, and, and I'll be honest, I've heard that it's this is better done at the end of your week, but okay. and I would I think it would be even better if I did it that way. I've just done it this other way so long. The first thing I like to do on a Monday morning is I like to plan out my entire week. Okay. Okay. You're deciding Monday, Thursday, and Friday. Yes. Okay. I wanna I wanna lay out and not like the meetings I have. Those are obviously oftentimes scheduled to reschedule. Scheduled to reschedule, yeah. whatever. I want to talk about the work that I'm trying to get done. My maybe. work for me. Yeah. My work for me that I've got to get done to make sure that we get our stuff moving forward. Yeah, yeah. A month down the road, right? And so I'm gonna start to lay that out. I'm gonna choose, okay, what are like three to five big things? like real big things that I want to work on this week. Yeah. And then I'm going to start to break it down into chunks. Um, I think a good goal is like three to five things a day. Okay. Like smaller tasks in, inside of that bigger thing. Um, I think there are obviously little things that we're going to just do, right? But I'm talking about like I need to spend time on Monday working on this talk. Yeah. I'm going to give myself time in there, yeah. and it may be a block yeah. where I'm like, Monday morning, I'm going to work on that, and I'm going to give myself two hours, right, or whatever. This is the time I've been given to get this thing done. The thing that I would recommend people begin to do is the realization that nobody... Nobody just grinds always. And no, that's not sustainable. No, that's not actually what people have. Yeah. yeah and yeah. so creating in your workday the realistic expectations of by the end of the day, we're going to move forward. I'm going to get some things done. Yeah. But if you're go, trying to go in there and schedule every 15 minutes of your life, you're going to you're going to make it to like 1030. Yeah. You're gonna be burnt out. You're gonna be burnt out, out, and then done. you're not gonna get anything done that afternoon. Yeah. But if you set realistic expectations for yourself, and you're going, "Hey, I'm gonna write this on Monday morning. Yep. And I'm gonna get it done. Yeah. That's the other part of it. You've got to actually get it. You've got to get it done. Not seventy percent done. You got to get yep. it done. The thing you got to get done. You got to get done. The because the reality is, and I, what's the there's a principle. It's. Um, Par- Parkinson's? No, 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 I think it is. Uh, it's something that's, like that's that. Not, where you're, No, no, no they, you're like, it, it shouldn't be this. Um, it, it's a principle that whatever the time frame that you put on something... Is how long it takes. Is yeah, how long yeah, it yeah. actually takes. Is that Pareto? Takes. Is it Pareto principle? No, I think that's 2080. Uh, it may be, but Parkinson's feels like it's the wrong answer. It, it, it's, it's we'll look it those, up and put it in the comments. It's one of those <laughs> things. It's like, that's a disease. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Anyways. Anyway, yeah. Th- things take the time you give them is Correct. the principle. Yeah, yeah. The, and so when when you're like, I'm going to finish this within two hours, yeah. you're going to finish it within two hours. The problem is when you're just like, I got to get this talk done. Then it just never gets done. And, yeah. Because there was more time to do it. You're waiting until the end. Yeah, yeah. You're waiting until the end. And so you give yourself There is a velocity of work that comes. And that's why I think people procrastinate because they get to feel that velocity. Because yeah. it's like, oh, man, I got to get it done. I got to get it done. And so you feel like the, you feel the hurry. The problem is it often comes across as hurried yeah. and not energized, which is not the place that you want to be. And the thing that I would recommend is this. If you give yourself two hours to get that talk done. The two-hour talk. And you knock it out in an hour and 25 minutes. Don't add something else. Don't. Mm. You or, did good. You won. You yeah. did good. Or do something in that space Coffee's that you for enjoy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Go, have, go grab a cup of coffee. You won. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, because what that's going to do for you, one, it's a little reward. Yeah. Right? Um, Which we're huge fans of. Like, that is such yes. a, one of our mutual friends, whenever he gets his email, email inbox cleared out, uh, he gets to have a bag of Swedish fish. That's his, that's his treat. That's his treat. Uh, like every every time that he gets his email inbox down to zero, he gets a bag of Swedish fish, and then he's like almost like programmed himself to do that. So See, that's it's great. pretty good. It's good. 
but what what's going to help you in that one it's going to get you ready for the next thing that you got to get done that you've already scheduled yeah so monday i'm going to try to schedule as many of those out all week yep i often work in blocks i really have about three blocks out of the day that i found work best for me i'll put big tasks in the morning for me and then i'll normally put like two to three smaller tasks in the afternoon that i yeah. want to try to accomplish um i i just know that post three o'clock I'm kind of worthless. Focus is done. Energy's tapped. You're just, you're feeling it. You're feeling it. I I like to put myself in meetings later in the day. Okay. Um, Oh my gosh. A hundred percent. The people that start their day off with a meeting, I'm like, you're, you're, you're literally burning up the best part of the day. Unless like, unless it's like the most important meeting of the whole week. Yeah. Get out of here. I can, I can rise and grind earlier and then really in those later afternoon times i need to be around people i love a one or two o'clock um, meeting and so, so much connect better. that kind of way um and so i want to put it in chunks like that i want to knock them out uh, but i want to schedule my meetings and so i i have start time end time um every once in a while when i'm really dragging yeah i'll even bust out a, a clock and timer Okay. That helps me have a little bit of Now, of that's motivation. the Pomodoro technique yeah. of, like, you literally, you set a 20-minute timer, and you do as much as you can in 20 minutes yeah. or 26 or whatever. But basically, like, I'm sprinting. Like, it, it hurts. Like, my like everything else is turned off. I'm only doing this. It makes my brain tired. But you'd be surprised how much you can do if you allow yourself the, like, uninterrupted focus of 20 or yep. 25 minutes. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I think getting further out, giving yourself blocks to work on, and then being done when you're done. I would even help. say getting further out. Like, man, if you feel overwhelmed right now and you're listening to this episode, and you're like, man, I'd love to be a week ahead. I feel a week behind. I would talk with your leader, your team. How do we get a week to reset to get back on track? You don't stop working, but is there a week that maybe this is the dodgeball night or it is like – the guest teacher night or whatever is thing that's clogging up and making you feel overwhelmed you don't stop working but you use that week of delegating away to get reset so you can be that week ahead because mm-hmm. you would you were going to prepare for the wednesday but you had your friend come in and teach or you had someone else kind of lead the thing so you actually had someone else in the driver's seat so you could get ahead for the next week i don't think it's wrong i don't think it's wrong to map and plan that way no no, and I think I think that there are, there are weeks. Not that we want to put it on autopilot, but I think that there are weeks that we could recycle things yeah. um, to get ourselves ahead, yeah. right? Like especially if you've been in it long enough, yeah. right? Like there was probably a series that you done, you know, two years ago, yeah, yeah. Or five years ago, yeah. You know what I mean? That none of those kids in this room even remember right, anymore yeah. there's still great content yeah um, that you're able to kind of pull back out but to do that you had to have folders and you had to keep stuff something saved yeah um so yeah okay you had a question you wanted to end us with okay yeah, yeah a little urgency in our lives so 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 this is a, i like a little make or break chad higgins here's the question that i asked you before we started yeah and i'm glad that it's made the, the this is a weird hypothetical for whatever reason, okay. life or death situation for for me or Zach, okay? You our, got, our wait, our lives our are on life. the, our life is on the line. Yes. Oh wow. Our life is on the line. Um we have to walk alongside a random youth pastor who's not very organized. You know them enough and you kind of know what they're up against. But they are having a hard time. They do not know having that, a real goal. Okay. They do not know that our life is at stake. Here. Okay, okay. They're just okay. having coffee with us, and we're just trying to input wisdom. Yeah, them. whatever. Re- they've asked us to be mentors of them. Okay, we get to walk next to them for six months. Okay, but at the end of the six months, they have another six months to live it out. Oh no. Okay, and then it's, and then it's determined: are they or are they not organized? Okay. Okay. So you get to like mentor somebody. I know there would be more. Give them their things, best. Yeah, give them their best. But what is the biggest thing that you would say, dude, I gotta get them to know this or do this to make sure that I live yeah, I'd a like year to and live. a half yeah. from now. Uh the one best thing. Um one the, best thing. You get them one best thing. Start earlier in the day. Okay. Um I, I know that's from a guy that likes to wake up early now, 
um, that didn't when I was 24 because I was coming out of college, man, you have to, I don't even start crazy early. I don't even start like at 4 a.m. or 5 a.m. But if you can start before people have demands on your time, you might win. Uh, and some of that is allowing people to not set demands on your time too soon, right? This is like if you can hold off that first meeting until 11 instead of 10. If you can push the collaborative session or the event uh, prep time to the afternoon because you're really just going to spend 8 to 10 or 9 to 11 trying to get the things that are the most important. You still, and we would spend six time, six months trying to figure out what the most important things are. But man, if you can do all your most importance before lunch, the other stuff will get done in the afternoon. The social media graphics, the funny video shoot, mm. um, the cleaning up the youth room, that's great after lunch work. Mm. Um, writing the communication to parents, finishing your talk, making sure your small group leaders have curriculum that's tuned to what they need, yeah. that's 9 a.m. stuff. That's 8 a.m. stuff, maybe even 7 a.m., yeah. depending on your rhythm Because you your got family. batteries in the tank, you're going to get it. You're ready. Finished. You're so ready. And so, like, don't – that's not the stuff that you're going to wait and get inspired to do. Mm. You, the inspiration comes from the routine of getting up early and getting after it's it. It's good. Okay. What's yours? What what is the, the one thing sound, you give? Dude, mine's gonna sound harsh. Harsh? But my life's harsh? on stake. My oh, life's on okay. stake. Okay. Uh you gotta get new friends. Okay. Uh and and I think I don't think I would have saw the tie of that ten years ago in something like organization, but it is a hundred percent true. I think that the people that we surround ourselves with, we become... We fall not, to their expectations yes. of us. And, and so the people that we're the closest with um, have seen us up and down, and they're good with where we're at. Yeah. They like you where you're at. Yeah. That's and why they're your friend. I think when you start to surround yourself with people that have a little bit higher expectation, uh, and you want that for yourself too... Yeah then you begin to live into that. Mm. And so I don't know that it's the end all be all fix all for organization, but I know that that would be if my life's on the line, somebody else, then I want them hanging out with the best possible four to five other people that have challenge them. that figured out in their life. That's good. And so you want to become more organized. You find yourself three or four people that are organized, yeah. and you start spending time with them because we're a little bit social creatures. Yeah. And you you show up in their world with enough unorganization. Yeah. When you become friends with them, the like poking happens. Yeah, yeah. And it's yeah. like, dude, yeah, come on, don't walk. yeah, yeah, get it together, uh, buddy. And, and and we naturally will start to solve some of those and because it becomes about this emotion thing. We don't, we don't want to be shamed. We don't want to be found out. Yeah. And so we surround ourselves with people that are good with the level that we have yeah. uh, and we live into it. Yeah. And, and so I think for us, if my life's on the line, I'm saying you got to find you four or five friends push you a little bit more that are killing it in yeah. student ministry at an organizational level. People you look up to, and you not people that are just peer to. Yeah, and you spend time with them, and not just as a leech. Yeah, but it's like, hey, dude, like I want to get to know you. Yeah. We we'll start hanging out. Yeah, that kind of stuff. Uh, Let's do together, plan yeah, together, yeah. dude. And and over time, I think that's going to make. Uh, you better not only an organization, but a lot of different areas. Yeah. You and the same thing's true. If you want to become a better communicator, uh, you know, disciple or any of those kind of things, hang out with the people that do it well. All right. There's your invitation to make some new friends uh, this week on the podcast, talking about the ways in which we're going to get organized, batch, adjust, and grow. So we'll see you back next time. Uh, snap. <laughs>